But this is a challenge that does not pause for partisan gridlock. It demands our attention now. And this is my plan to meet it, a plan to cut carbon pollution, a plan to protect our country from the impacts of climate change, and a plan to lead the world in a coordinated assault on a changing climate. Don't tell folks that we have to choose between the health of our children or the health of our economy. The old rules the old rules may say we can't protect our environment and promote economic growth at the same time, but in America, we've always used new technologies. We've used science. We've used research and development and discovery to make the old rules obsolete. And we have to all shoulder the responsibility for keeping the planet habitable, or we're going to suffer the consequences together. And those of us in positions of responsibility. We'll need to be less concerned with the judgment of special interests and well-connected donors, and more concerned with the judgment of posterity. President Obama unveiled his plan to combat global climate change emissions from U.S. power plants. The speech, well, it got immediate reactions. The House Speaker John Boehner, he criticized the plan before the speech was even delivered. Meanwhile, Al Gore, he called it, quote, the best address on climate by any president ever, end quote. And for more, we're very pleased to be joined by Nathaniel Cohan. Nathaniel is vice president at the Environmental Defense Fund, where he leads their international climate program, and previously not served in the Obama administration as special assistant to the president for energy and environment in the National Economic Council and Domestic Policy Council. Nathaniel, thank you very much for a few minutes. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. What, what was your reaction to the address? I thought it was a terrific speech, um, both for the substance uh, and, and this, some of the specifics that the president announced, including the, um, the power plant standards you mentioned, but also just for the way he framed the issue. He talked about this as important for American jobs and economic growth. He talked about this as an issue for prosperity and how do you want to be looked at, you know, how do you, how do you want to uh, look, uh, be looked at in the future? Uh, can you look your kids in the eye and say you did everything to work on this issue? He talked about this as an issue of cutting edge clean technology and competitiveness around the world. So I think his framing in that way, speaking to the American people, was as important as the good set of, uh, of actions he outlined. Talk about the expectations or, or I guess the mandate as it relates to the Keystone Pipeline. If it meets X threshold, it then can be built. And from a practical standpoint, to those of us who can't quantify net carbon emissions, um, how difficult does this make the project as currently constituted to go forward? Well, you know, I, I think it's too soon to tell because I, I haven't seen, I don't think any of us has, have seen the specific uh, criteria. But I think what the president did was very interesting and frankly very smart on that issue. I will also, I mean, I'll say that you may, the environmental community has been very strong uh, about Keystone as an important symbol on climate. So we're going to have to see what the president does to follow up on it. But again, I thought a very interesting take, and I don't think one that people were expecting. And the broader point that I'll just bring out beyond the pipeline is here's the president saying an issue of national interest needs to include climate change impacts and take that into account. I think that's a very interesting precedent uh, and an important precedent to set for other issues that are also about national interest. And this may be if not inside baseball, um, but he's doing this largely through executive order. He's not going to try and run the gauntlet of Congress in terms of getting approval. Well, frankly, we know it would die in the House. But to that end, um, it was limited in scope in terms of where he was trying to go. Now, you can maybe uh, give me a little bit of a reality check to having served in the administration and understanding D.C., but I think I speak for many people. When I came a little late to the game and climate change didn't really register on my radar, but in recent years, and putting in the context of my kids, I said, time out. There's going to be another Sandy. We look at this extreme weather, and when I looked at the recent findings that you have to go back millions of years for the significance of having 400 parts per million in terms of, you know, the concentration of carbon dioxide out there, that this is going to be... We're passing this buck to our kids, and we haven't talked about what we're going to really do to fortify the shores. We haven't talked about what we really are going to have to do for the immediate, medium, and long term in terms of further restrictions. It's been four and a half years since the president got in, 
Is this as ambitious as he can get with the political dynamic? Or frankly, did you expect more since 08 that he would have tried on this issue that we're sitting here now in June and, and this is the best we've gotten so far? Well, I, I think you have to look at the tools the president has available. Uh, and given that set of tools, I think this is about as ambitious as, uh, as we could hope for right now. Um, the power plant standards are going to be, uh, again, it depends on how they're implemented. It, a lot will depend on the details and the specifics. But if the president carries this plan through ambitiously and uses his authority under the Clean Air Act and throughout these other uh, executive agencies to the fullest extent he can, uh, then this will be very significant. Uh, the pow you know, power plants account for 40 percent of carbon pollution in this country. As the president said, most people may not realize there are no limits on carbon pollution, even as we have limits on mercury and arsenic and lead and sulfur and so on. So this is a very significant step. Now, in the long run, as the president himself has said, we are going to need more action. We're going to need Congress uh, to get past the partisan gridlock and enact some policies. But given what the president has in his toolbox, I think this is a pretty ambitious set of measures. How do we get the country to get behind it when so many in Washington um, look at this as more of a political issue? Well, I, I think that's a key issue. And let me give you a couple of thoughts. One is, uh, just for those of us in the New York area, I think we've already seen firsthand last fall uh, a harbinger of, uh, of, the, of what's to come with, um, with climate change, with, with Superstorm Sandy. Uh, you know, regardless of whether you attribute that particular storm, it's pretty clear that the higher sea levels as a result of climate change made Sandy worse. They made the storm surge worse. Uh, you also see, as the president pointed to, record heat waves and droughts across the country in 2012. You're seeing wildfires. Uh, uh, and hundred-year floods happening on a much more frequent, uh, frequent basis. So I think actually people, not only in the New York region, but around the country, are seeing these impacts for themselves. You see polling data that says that 70 percent of Americans believe that uh, global warming is real and happening already. So in some ways, as the president said, I think this is Washington catching up to the country. I think this is, you know, this is often seen as a political inside baseball issue, but in many ways this is a middle, middle America issue. This is about a family on the Jersey Shore uh, who got hit by Sandy. This is about farmers in the Midwest suffering drought uh, on their cornfields uh, and, and wondering about what the future is going to bring on climate. This is about people in the Rockies uh, seeing wildfires uh, ravaging the, the, the forests on the slope. So I think people are seeing the impacts and I think that's going to contribute uh, to a growing public awareness and we're already seeing it contributing to a public awareness. The president's action today helps reset the tone uh, in Washington and, and hopefully over the years and months to come uh, we'll start getting back to that kind of bipartisan national conversation we need to be having. Thank you. I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. And trust me everyone this is the conversation unfortunately I believe that we're going to be having more and more often with more and more serious issues surrounding it. But when we come back we're going to turn to a major issue of the day and again like so many we've talked about today it centers on the issue of race. The Supreme Court today handing down a major decision and they all but threw out the Voting Rights Act, a historically significant day where it says where we were, where we are now and whether or not we still need some of the measures they put in many years ago. We'll explain after this break, so please stay with us.